The Clean Prep Laboratory is designed and verified to be a Class 10,000 environment for working with optics, optomechanics, vacuum, actuators, sensors, and 2D detectors. The BioPrep room can be reconfigured to CXFEL prep with basic amenities for sample prep, either dry or wet. This space could overlap with the light and dark biochemistry areas, or it could be entirely separate. We also envision management of samples that were brought from other institutions and preparation of those samples before we would go into experiment prep area for final instrument prep. The light and dark biochemistry lab was purpose-built to enable and support the purification of proteins used in protein crystallography experiments, where the crystals would be then used for X-ray diffraction experiments on the CXLS. In addition, this lab is meant for the preparation of protein solutions for small-angle X-ray scattering SACS experiments. It provides user support in a very usable and proximal way. When working with proteins that are not sensitive to light, we can work in the so-called light biochemistry area. But if we're working with proteins that are light sensitive, we must control the type of light that they see. So next, we have the dark biochemistry lab with lighting control. Seen here, the red and green lights are on at the same time, but you can select any combination of white, red, or green, or just one of those. For example, if you're working on the protein Visiorhodopsin, which is critical to eyesight, red lighting conditions would be necessary. For crystallization work, we have an environmental room, also light controlled, that can be accessed to set up your crystallization trials. Experiment prep is the setup area before entering either Hutch 1 for CXLS or Hutch 2 for CXFEL. Inspired by functionality at LCLS at Slack, this is intended to provide lab space for testing of sample injectors and related experimental apparatus prior to installation on the beamline. Hutch 1 Control is the mission control center for individual beam times. Prior to initiating control, the investigators would have gone into the experimental hutch, which is directly ahead. They will have mounted their samples, come out, and then they will have secured the ionizing radiation door and interlock system prior to initiating x-rays to the hutch and control of the experiment. Beamline scientists will sit on the left and control all the motors, actuators, and diagnostics for the x-ray beam inside the experimental hutch. At the far wall, we have control stations for the accelerator physicist and for the laser scientist to control the DIRA IR laser and the electron beam accelerator and the synchronization of all those components. Hutch 1 is where hard X-ray beam experiments are conducted. This system has been commissioned by faculty and students through Phase 1 and is scheduled for final commissioning in late January. It will provide broad spectral access for pump laser interaction with the sample prior to the X-ray probe. When the X-ray pulses from the CXLS interact with the sample, they'll either scatter in solution scattering or they will diffract in solid sample or protein crystal configurations. Our 4 megapixel, 1000 frame per second X-ray detector, the Dectris Iger X4M, is ideally suited to capture every shot of CXFEL experiments. Diagnostics are placed at strategic locations as we complete the beamline build. In the anteroom outside Laser 1, the safety enunciation above indicates if the room is in a safe condition, there are interlock systems on the right. Safety messages are posted for operating modes on the doors. Laser 1 houses the DIRA High Power IR laser that's focused to collide with the electron beam to produce the X-rays. We have an auxiliary laser table for building subsystems and the DIRA laser with power supply. We can house diagnostics and beam shaping before going through the wall. And then in the enclosures that we've provided here, we are building out and testing optic subsystems that shape and work with the DIRA laser beam. The final telescoping optics and entry to the vacuum transport system moves the IR beam from this laser lab into the vault, shown right there in that shiny pipe. The DIRA laser was previously fully commissioned and met its specifications of stable 200 millijoule pulses at kilohertz repetition rate. In the accelerator lab, we have a variety of specialized areas. 
Here is where students and staff test and verify RF chassis that serve the low-level RF system. We can also clean parts for ultra-high vacuum use. Over in this area, we're proving out our area monitor radiation detector sensors for gamma and neutron radiation and working spaces. This is the entrance to the RF room that is a sealed metal Faraday cage to prevent interference with the sensitive RF signals. Inside the RF room, we see two X-band transmitters that operate at 1 kHz repetition rate and produce 6 million watts each of microwave power that goes into the accelerator structures in Vault 1. We have transmitter 1 on the right, transmitter 2 on the left. The adjacent suite for CXVEL has an identical Faraday cage with space for two transmitters. Also note the emergency stops and fire controls. Safety is job number one. As we enter Vault 1, we pass the 20-ton shield door and step onto the 6-foot-thick floor that is isolated from the rest of the building to provide a stable beam platform. The floor vibration measurements meet sensitive electron microscope standards. The same is true for the floors in the laser room and x-ray hutch. We worked with construction crews to hand sort the iron rebar in the walls to keep stray magnetic field at half a gauss. This is the photo injector laser that sends UV light to the cathode to create the electron beam. Here is the photo injector. A UV pulse goes through that pipe and into a novel kilohertz photo injector inside the yellow solenoid. The copper waveguide brings RF energy from the transmitters into the accelerator structures, including the photo injector and Linux. The Linux operate at 1 kHz and are likely the most efficient room temperature Linux in the world. The black boxes contain pneumatic cylinders that insert diagnostic cerium-doped YAG scintillating screens that glow when the electron beam hits them so we can see the beam size and position with micron resolution. We have many of these down the beam line. The quadrupole magnets, designed and measured by students and staff, act as focusing lenses for the electron beam. This is the chicane section, where we do energy selection and femtosecond electron bunch compression. This enclosure is for management of the IR beam that comes from the laser lab. This is the high power IR beam that collides with the electrons to produce the X-rays. The magnet power supplies that are required to run the CXLS are located in the left bay of the temperature-controlled rack. In the right bay, we have multiple chassis that are part of the low-level RF system, as well as data acquisition and output for control. These precision low-level RF systems were designed and built here, at ASU, by staff and students. Initial beam tests show excellent stability. This is the accelerator control room during our commissioning phase. These screens show control of our various electrical and mechanical system using the same EPICS control system that is widely used in major facilities. We interface to EPICS through MATLAB and national instruments programs that provide flexibility and ease of use. We're operating at 100 hertz now. We're gonna step up to a kilohertz. Okay, so that's 100 hertz. Here's uh, 200. Yeah, sort of 300. That's 500. I'm going to 1,000. 